Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of May. Now this month we are going to have a beautiful exalted sun in our skies. I'm very excited about this and that's also why I'm wearing this yellow jumper here today because I want to honor the sun. And I know some of you in the comments have said that yellow is not a color that suits me and I shouldn't wear it because my it doesn't match my colors or something like that. Uh, and a couple of you, well, one of you recommended I should get my colors done. And I've heard about this. I've heard that you can go to some place and they'll analyze your skin tone and what you've got going on and they'll recommend what color palette you should wear that's good for your energy and all that kind of thing and I would love to get that done but at the moment I just don't have well I probably have time oh I don't know I don't even have time I was gonna say I don't have spare funds to do that kind of thing there are lots of things I would love to do you know um, all the Louise Hay type stuff I know when she had spare money in her bank account she got her handwriting analyzed and she got her aura checked and this checked and that checked and believe me I'd love to do all of that but yeah one day I will one day I will and but you know I, I put the yellow jumper on today and I just wanted to share this with you in case you're feeling low on energy or um, you know that that you need a shift I discovered a little shift just today so this week all of my sessions have been pre-recorded sessions I haven't had to do any live zoom sessions uh, so I've just been kind of wearing the same jumper it was my pink jumper and um, jeans like every day so I know that's probably terrible we should change outfits or something don't worry I was changing all the undergarments so I'm not like you know really gross or anything but yeah I <laughs> the point is I've been lazy and I haven't been you know changing my outfit or anything and then this afternoon I you know I think it hit about five o'clock it's about six now and it hit five o'clock and I was like oh I just don't have energy and anyway I changed into this yellow jumper and I got all this energy and I really believe that color therapy is a thing and I think when we change the color palette we're wearing sometimes we can boost our own energy like I feel fantastic I'm like oh this is great I've got this new color on and it has made a difference so maybe maybe you just need to surround yourself with a different color I thought I would put that out there anyway um, what do we have going on this month so I'm going to talk about energy in May in brief energy for May in brief we're going to have a look at what's going on in the sky I'll talk you through what I see and then we're going to just take a look at a couple of your comments and questions and that's it then we get straight into the mini reports for the mini reports I'm going to be talking through exalted sun we're going to have a look at Mars Rahu in Pisces and of course because Mars Rahu is in Pisces and the Lord of Pisces is Jupiter and Venus is going to be there with Jupiter I thought I'd touch on that for the mini reports this month so let's take a look at the energy for this month what do we have going on well I've got here yeah right now actually so what I'm recording this on the 18th of April right now we are experiencing that glorious exalted Sun and if you want to tap into that if you've got a yellow jumper find it now am I saying the right word is it jumper is it sweater I don't know I should look that up I should see which which country uses which um, we've got an exalted Sun yeah and if you need to guys I don't know find find a yellow jumper or sweater or a yellow scarf or something get get the yellow happening because it does work I really think it does boost the energy somehow now the Sun is going to be in great shape through to the 13th of May so a good half of May is going to be in that dazzling exalted Sun energy now remember that we have Akshaya Trithia on 9th May okay 9th May so that's Akshaya Trithia is an auspicious date in Vedic astrology where the Sun and the moon are exalted so you will definitely want to note that one down 
and if you've got something special that you can do on that day or something you want to do if you can launch something new on that day that would be a really good thing to do so 9th may is the day i believe it's a thursday if i've got that right i'll put it on the screen if i don't but thursday is wonderful as well because that's jupiter and i think the the phrase as per western culture is is it thursday's child is far to go something like that so if you start a business on that day that would be a really good day to start something uh, now we've got saturn in aquarius still okay that's ongoing for some of you that is a really good energy especially if your uh, transit is say for example third from the moon sixth from the moon eleventh from the moon or third from ascendant sixth from ascendant eleventh from ascendant it's a great transit for you we've got saturn in aquarius and we have jupiter entering taurus i've talked about that already you can have a look at that video in case you missed it i've covered jupiter in taurus for every single sign but because jupiter's in taurus it's moving closer to its exaltation sign of cancer jupiter is getting stronger okay and one of the things that we can see on the world stage uh, jupiter is going to be you know in taurus getting closer to cancer this is all very good saturn's in aquarius so there is quite a bit of spotlight on the people and i've got here as mars approaches rahu we can expect to see some more justice in the world so i know that there are big problems in the world as well i yeah I, that that is happening but in some parts of the world this a, a, another movement is happening and, and what that is i've got here court systems are coming back online now courts are starting to gain strength courts are starting to catch up with all the backlog that they've been dealing with over the last few years so court systems are coming back online now and are ruling in favor of the people more and more I have been seeing that in a few different countries. Uh, I have been checking out the news a little bit here and there, and I can definitely tell you that there is progress on that front. Things are getting a little bit better. I know if we only tune in to the disasters, that does color our view. There is a lot of um, kind of incremental, slow, long-term positive good that is happening as well so we've really got to keep that in mind now mars is going to be exactly conjunct rahu on the 20th of may and i'll be taking a look at that for for all of you uh, after the 20th of may we're going to have venus step into taurus and we're all going to be feeling that new jupiter in energy jupiter in taurus energy even more okay so that's something i'm going to have a look at in every single mini report this time i'm going to cover where the, where in our life can we likely feel that fresh new energy that is really going to be picking up steam definitely 20th may onwards you know especially when venus steps into taurus venus is the lord of the house and i do think that that is uh that's going to be good that's that's going to be some fresh new energy that we'll we'll feel more so we've done our eclipses you know we've done the tough stuff we're now building improving gradually incrementally continuously you know moving along here I, that's that's how i see the energy going forward i thought i'd take a look at some of your comments and questions. I just randomly went to my dashboard and I picked three. Um, so I know I don't always do this. Last couple of times, I think I've been doing a poll on the internet, just of, of some of you, various questions. I will keep doing those, but this month I didn't have time to do the poll. Uh, and also cause I'm pr producing the report a little bit early. So I just thought instead I'll just pick three little you know comments and questions and i'll just uh, chat about those so comments and questions the first one i've got here is and what i'll do is i'll just kind of blur out the name I, the reason i do that is because when you wrote your comment you probably didn't think that i'd be going and putting it on the 
you know, on the screen like that. So that's why I tend to blur out the names, just because, yeah, um, I, I don't often do this. So the first one was, thank you so much for the information. What are the best mantras for Sarisati period? Yeah, what are some Saturn mantras? And what I would say here is, I do believe Lord Shiva is is the best uh, to, I'm sure there are other more technical mantras. I've actually got um, a book here. Oh gosh, I didn't know I was going to bring this one down, but I will now. It's by Andrew Foss. Um, you can have a look at this. Yog, yoga of the planets or yoga of the planets. Their mantras and philosophy. And this is a really incredible work. Uh, and it has you know, you, you, can, you can go deep in here and, and look up quite a lot of mantras. Um, it, it's extraordinary. You can just tell by the size of this phenomenal book that, um, yeah, a huge amount of work has gone into that. I am, when it comes to mantras, I'm, I'm extremely simple. Uh, and I would say, I would just say, if it were me in the Sati Sati and for Saturn mantra, Om Namah Shivai, that is my go-to. I'll just put it on the screen. That is the one that I do. Uh, I do do that frequently. I started doing that in 2020 onwards. I started using mantras quite a bit. And one of the things that I have been meaning to update you guys on, I mentioned this. Now I'll see if I can point to it above, but <clears throat> I think it was the video I did about mantras where and I, I posted this video because this was I think October last year when you know war broke out in the Middle East and it, it was just crazy right so I just thought well I have to do something and what is something we can all do at home for free well we can all chant mantras so I made a video about that and then I heard some people on the internet sort of say to their audiences that oh you should never listen to someone off the internet giving mantras that's very bad and you should go to a guru and you should you know be in a proper course and this and that and you know i i tend to think that um it's good to just use the simple universal mantras free of charge i don't think you should have to pay anyone or go to a course or do some specialized thing uh, i think these are really simple things and I just do the simple things. So I, I do Om Namah Shivai. I'm yet to really get into um, Andrew Foster's beautiful book there. I, I am going to get into that and have a look. But even if I read those and, and discover all the, the more technical things that one can do, I would probably stick to the more generic ones. Um, and that's the Saturnian in me. That's the Saturn person in me that it's just like, go for the basic, the bare bones basic what is the the simple the classic the you know the ultimate and really om namah shiva shiva is what i would do but yeah i so i made anyway i made this video um that was about mantras and and i showed you my beads as well oh hang on i've got this other necklace here but i'll put that one away these are my beads so i do use this is 108 and this is um unikite which is really pretty. And the reason I like this is because it's green and pink. That's what the stone is green and pink. I don't know if it's focusing. I don't think it's focusing. It's going to focus. It's focusing on me. Don't do that. There we go. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So these are the beads that I use. And, um, and I, yeah, I mentioned this on that video and I said to you guys, um, I think it was on that video where I said, I will reveal something that I'm doing with mantras, but I'll reveal it when I've done it. And I've finally done it. So what I was doing at that time and have been doing for around 10 months, it has taken me 10 months. I've done 1.25 lakh uh, and I believe lakh is 100,000. So that's 125,000. Uh, Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha. So that is me honoring uh, Lord Ganesh Ji. I'll put it on the screen. You'll be able to see that. So I did that. And I did, it took me about, I would do 10 
rounds of mala per day and that would if I do it all in a row I'm pretty sure it took me about half an hour per day and so I did that I think it took me about 10 months to do that many it might have been a bit longer and I was finishing it when I um, was leaving Sydney and when I was leaving Sydney because I did extend the trip a bit because I was a bit sick and I was also finishing my set I didn't know I was going to complete that but I did I finished it there and my mum I think she was doing some spring cleaning or something and she found this and I'll show you it's a beautiful silver coin oh hang on it's focusing on me there we go focus on this ah yeah I think you can see it isn't that stunning it's a beautiful silver coin and it's got ohm on the back and anyway she found this coin and she was just inspired to say wow this is a because we forgot it was even in the house and it required some cleaning actually it had tarnished a bit and um, she said hey you're completing that big big mantra set she said why don't you take this with you and I was just blown away because like yeah I didn't know what would happen in my life as a result of completing that many mantras I didn't set out to do it with an objective that I want something I just wanted to do that many mantras and that's what I wanted to do that was my reward having done it and then yeah that 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 was all I had in mind but look at that I got this incredible coin so yeah that was pretty amazing um, so I definitely re recommend so that's my experience with mantra chanting now I have just gone back to my usual meditation at the moment I just do 15 minutes first thing in the morning per day and that's it and I'm just happy doing that and then if I feel inspired I think the next mantra that I would like to work with is Om Namah Shivaya but how much of it am I going to do and how long and what am I going to do I don't know I think it'll be guided to me I'll be shown what I need to do but definitely if, if I was in a Saudi Sati I would um, do something like that if you're in a Saudi Sati another thing that you can do have I got it up here yes I do uh, I'm getting out all my books the greatness of Saturn you can read this apparently this oh hang on it's not going to focus there we go it'll focus when my face isn't in the camera the greatness of Saturn Robert Svoboda get that and apparently you can read that as a remedy if you're in your Sati Sati period it's just, just a good thing to read and reread um, I'm going to be talking about reading and rereading in a moment because one of you has asked an interesting well you've made an interesting comment which I wanted to talk about but yeah you can um, you can read this uh, as a tribute to, to honor Saturn or you know to connect with Saturnian energy um, and what else can you do and you can also pray to Lord Hanuman Hanumanji you can pray to Lord Hanuman and you can recite Hanuman Chalisa on uh, Tuesdays Tuesdays or Saturday and also uh, another thing you can do maybe if you're pressed for time you're working you know Saturn would love that you're working and you're busy so Saturn loves that and then maybe you've only got time really to do your mantras on Saturday just do them on Saturday that's Saturn's day uh, just just do your work then you know but that that is um, you'll be guided you'll be shown what to do so just be really open to your own intuition and your own guidance and you'll be shown what to do uh, the next comment I have was oh, I like this one this is definitely an Aussie accent <clears throat> am I wrong no you're not wrong I'm Aussie uh, yeah it's an Aussie accent uh, I was born in Sydney so you might be new here um, dear viewer and yeah I was born in Sydney and uh, grew up there to two Indian parents so I'm Indian completely and uh, but I yeah I am um, oh my phone I shouldn't be getting any messages anyway yeah I am um, I'm from Australia so that's correct you've definitely identified an Aussie accent but I did spend a little small portion of some of my childhood in the United States and that's actually where I learned English so um, 
I do sometimes some words come out a little bit American as well. <laughs> I've got a weird accent. Now I, I live here in England and sometimes when I was in Sydney, so certain words and phrases would come out very English. My family just look at me, they're just like, we don't know, we don't know what you are. All right, and the next comment, I, I really, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about this one. This was a good comment because I think a lot of people feel this way. A lot of people have these thoughts. I know I've certainly gone through all these things too. Um, this lovely viewer here says, I feel like my chart is cursed. I swear, I don't ever get a break. As, a, as an Aquarius ascendant with a Scorpio sun and a Scorpio moon, it seems like my entire life is turbulent and an emotional wreck and I never find my peace. 33 years old and just exhausted from existing. I hear you and you know I think a lot of people do feel like this. You're really not alone and that's why I pulled this one out because I'm sure that there are many uh, viewers in this community definitely but just many people in the whole world who feel exactly like this. And I've had all these feelings too. Uh, I've definitely had some interesting feelings around my chart. Yeah, and I, I, I when uh, I, I came to studying astrology myself, what I observe is that it's very interesting that my guides didn't let me even touch the system until my Saturn matured for a start. So that was 36. And then the other thing is, and well, up until 36, I mean, I've always been interested in astrology. So I was allowed to watch a lot of Western astrology and get into that in my early years. But I wasn't allowed to touch the Vedic system because it's like my guides, they were very smart. They made sure I did a lot of spiritual work first. And I had to do a lot of spiritual work first because sometimes when you self-study your chart, like you, you, you sort of do need to... Um, yeah be prepared but equally to to use the system properly as well uh, because it is a tool that's how i view vedic astrology and any astrology western astrology all the astrological systems for me they're all tools and it's kind of like this comment got me thinking about how you know with um astrology it's a tool and it's like a knife and if you pick up a knife and you mishandle the knife, you will cut yourself and it will hurt and you, you won't, you know, it'll be just a terrible experience. But you give that knife to a chef and the chef will create you a beautiful meal. You know, the chef is skilled in how to use the knife and they will, as I say, prepare a beautiful meal and you will go back to that chef again and again. You will want to have more meals from that chef. So it's a little bit like that with um, with astrology that I know we can we can sometimes be down about our own chart, but um, that's not when we're not using the tool in the right way. And one of the things that I do in a reading is I look at I do look at your karmic lords. I do look for where are the challenges, where are the difficulties, where are the blind spots. I do try to draw out those things I do but what I've seen with every single chart is that you are equipped you are totally equipped to take on the various challenges that you've mapped out for yourself and most people most just about everyone I've read for oh I'm amazed the camera cut out just then I didn't realize I've been talking for so long I thought this was going to be a short episode because I don't have any news match up but look at me waffling on uh yeah I, I think I was just saying that um that I can I can always find a ton of gifts uh you know for for everybody and you, you said that you're an Aquarius ascendant. I mean, there's there's a load of gifts in that. Scorpio sun and Scorpio moon. Look, I'll tell you something. Scorpio moon is a challenging placement. But look at Kyle Cease. Okay, I'll put his um, name on the screen. Check out his channel. He is the most incredible life coach, coach kind of guy. Like he's got a Scorpio moon, you know. And what I've found through studying the charts of really, really successful, famous people is that every time in astrology where I've thought, oh, this is a bad thing, I've seen it be brilliant for someone else. Uh, you know, I've seen that very same thing 
produce amazing results. So it is, astrology is, is, it is a bit of a knife and you do have to be skilled in how to use it. Um, but I'll tell you how I've dealt with when, when I've felt that, yeah, my entire life is turbulent, emotional wreck. I never find my peace, 33 years old. Yeah, and I, I was like that at 33, definitely. And I'll tell you what I do uh, because, yeah, and what I would say is, so what I would say is put down the, the astrology tool. Put down, the, you, and you definitely don't get a reading or any of that. You don't need that. Um, because I think getting a reading, to me, that's like a luxury good. It belongs in the luxury goods market. Nobody needs an astrology reading, right? It's a, it's a luxury good. And it's there, you know, it's, it's, it's a very wonderful thing if you can have one, but you don't need it. And what, what I've done in my life is, um, and that's why I've got this book here, I, I, I have found my teachers and I just keep going back to the same teacher. Now, this is Louise Hay, her book. Now, you can see my mum gave me this and she wrapped it up in, this was some kind of wrapping paper. And you know, it used to have this sparkly stuff on there and it was a deep pink color. You can see the original color there, but it's had sun damage and all the sparkles have fallen off and even the design of the wrapping paper has fallen off. So we cover our books, sometimes in magazine paper, sometimes in old gift wrap so that we keep our books lasting longer. Um, well, my mum does that anyway. You can see with that Andrew Foss book there and this one, I haven't put the cover on those, but I've, I've fallen out of the habit, but my mum's very good. She covers all the books. And anyway, so this is my copy of You Can Heal Your Life, which you can see uh, has had a lot of sun damage. I just keep coming back to this book again and again and again. I've been reading this one since 2006. And more recently, I've got a new book um, since 2020, I've been rereading, reading and rereading, and I'll put it on the screen. Lester Levinson, Happiness is Free. I've been reading and rereading those books. And why do I do that? Why do I read the same book many times? It's because to, to me, these books, are, they're not entertainment. They're not, um, a lot of times people go to spiritual videos and spiritual stuff, and it's kind of, they get the soothing while watching the video but then they switch off the video or the thing and then, you know, life is miserable again. But that's, that's, it's not entertainment, it's not soothing, it's none of that. These books to me, they work. And what I have done with these books, so this book definitely, I'm still coming back to this one. Just recently I've come back to it for her section on money and bills and stuff like that. She's even got stuff about bills and how you feel about bills. So I've been coming back to this recently. What I find with these books is that if you read it once, you'll just go, oh yeah, well, self-love, big deal. What, what, what are you supposed to do with that? What you're supposed to do with these books is you're supposed to really apply the principles. And that's why I like Lester Levinson, Happiness is Free, because it's just full of wisdom principles. And what I like to do is I like to work with a concept. Like I, I want to internalize it and I want to get good at it and I want to practice it in my life. And the transformational bit, now you see you've got a Scorpio sun and a Scorpio moon. So who's going to be great at transformation? It's going to be you. You're, you're gifted to transform things. You're gifted to alchemize anything, even the toughest stuff, even the stuff that's here. I'm tempted to have a look at Louise Hay's chart just to see what eighth house or Scorpio she has. I'm sure she has some because she's done a huge amount of transformational work. This book is gold to me, uh, and the Lester Levinson book, as I said, since 2020, I've been reading and rereading just that same book. I highlight it on my Kindle, and uh, it has been so good. And they're not, and, and what I like to read Lester just before I sleep. What I do is I read some of the wisdom concepts, and I take one into my sleep state with me. And that's been my daily practice since about 2020. And I can tell you that. Um, these two books have changed my life. Um, another book uh, I've got here, Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, which is propping up this camera. Um, you might like Eckhart. You know, uh, my, yeah, my family loves Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle. So that's The Power Now, A New Earth. 
uh, people off the back of just that one book, The Power of Now, they've changed their lives. These books, they're not entertainment, they're not for relaxation, they're not fun reads, they're very practical reads that you work with uh, to, cha to literally change your consciousness. And what you will do is you will make this wisdom your own and then you will be able to help other people. I promise you. Okay, so I recommend these kind of books and I recommend and that's why and you know yeah I've also shared my thoughts on astrology and, and the tool of astrology and you know its place in your life um, it's, a, it's a wonderful tool but it's not everything and um, yeah you see I feel like my chart is cursed another thing about that is that so I was reading on a forum on Quora someone had asked about dead planets they said I've got a lot of dead planets in my chart what do I do and the astrologer I love what the astrologer wrote she was really good she she was and but it's very snappy and just like a like a knife she just sort of went in there and she said oh it's not your planets that are dead it's your thinking that's dead and I thought oh, yeah wow I love that I thought that's good and I like that kind of thing you know where someone just kind of just goes hey um, but I, I wouldn't say that your thinking is cursed or any of that but what I would say is that you're giving your power to a concept and yeah I, I mean um, we do that in life we give our power to a concept we give our power to a story we give our power to a belief we give our power to a thought we give our power to a feeling you know and another way that you can view your mind is that it's just another screen so I've cut back well I don't really watch TV I have a TV but I don't turn it on I do watch YouTube though and I do watch some you know like sort of trivial viewing and you know I, I do watch a bit of cheesy stuff and probably stuff I shouldn't watch but you know when you want to unwind after a long day of work I think it's okay but like I do watch YouTube but like one of the things I've been seeing is that like my mind is like another YouTube and yeah it's like we don't don't let these thoughts that come from the mind see it's you should be in charge of your mind not your mind in charge of you and I'm now beginning to view my mind as like another YouTube or another TV or another screen you know that um, that just has thoughts and yeah they come and go meditation that's another thing you can do and I'll put on the screen if you want to do my meditation course uh, yeah, I have a small one on the on my website and you can type in om free at the checkout and you'll get that for free so yeah I, I just wanted to cover that off guys I think it's time to get into the mini reports let's do it I've got my yellow jumper on I have energy we're gonna do it and I'm just realizing that the time is my goodness it's 6 30 already I have got to move on here so I'm gonna hit record on my trusty little iPad and we are now going to take a look at Aries Aries what's going on all right you have got this month the month of May you've got Sun exalted in Aries in your first house until the 13th of May so for the first half of the month you might feel quite good you might feel optimistic um, but equally take care because we've got the physical body here and the Sun when the Sun the Sun is powerful here so it can be draining on the physical body all right so internally you might feel good inside you might feel optimistic it might be just a bit easier to be a bit happier certainly here in the northern hemisphere the weather is improving you know and that that all puts a, a smile on our face here so yeah you might have some some nice days out or something like that um, the Sun exalted in Aries is good for attracting attention it's good for being seen it's good for upping your profile getting work getting clients all of that now as Mars approaches Rahu in your 12th house we have got a couple of things going on here so now Mars approaches Rahu in your 12th house through to 20th May as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter and now Jupiter is in Taurus and Jupiter is going to be joined by Venus Taurus's Lord right from 19th May onwards you've got this fresh new energy that you're going to start to feel 
in that last third of May. So you're going to feel this most in your spiritual side. All right. So any self-development work, any self-improvement work that you do is going to yield good results at this time. Now we've got a new moon on the 8th of May in your first house. This is happening in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra. This is excellent for getting new creative ideas. And that's creative ideas for any area of your life. Okay, anything, you know, and this could be tied into some of that self-development, self-improvement work you do. What, you know, whatever you want to improve, plant a seed for that on the 8th of May. And then we've got a full moon, 23rd May, in your 8th house, Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So you could be closing out a cycle regarding family or extended family or in-laws or something to do with shared assets, any of that. But Aries, it's looking like a good month ahead. I'm wishing you well. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. So you've got Sun exalted in Aries in your 12th house until the 13th of May. So for the first half of the month, you've got that big, powerful Sun in the 12th house. Okay, and that is to do with our sleep. So you might actually find it a bit harder to sleep this, uh, you know, for the first half of this month, but that's okay. Um, that's going to pass. And I've got here the sun illuminates where it sits. So you might be able to figure out what's standing in the way of what you really want. And this could be around beliefs. So is it a lack of confidence? Is it a lack of self belief? Whatever is in the way internally you can figure it out at this time. Now Mars approaches Rahu in your 11th house through to the 20th of May and because we've got Pisces lauded by Jupiter and now we've got Jupiter in Taurus and Jupiter will be joined by Taurus's Lord which is Venus from 19th May onwards for that last third of the month you've got a new energy available to you okay you're going to really feel it and for you, this could draw positive attention to you, to your work, to your projects. This could be a good time to grow networks or to go for new opportunities as well. We've got a new moon, 8th of May, in your 12th house in Aries Bharani Nakshatra. You could get insights or new ideas from your dream state. So if you keep a dream journal, you might want to make note of this date. Uh, and you can plant seeds for spiritual growth. Now, what does that mean? So you could plant seeds for a more powerful intuition or a more focused mind. What is it that you would like to have going on internally that you know is going to make a real difference to your life? You can plant a seed for that. And we've got a full moon on the 23rd of May in your seventh house. And that's happening in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So you could be closing out cycles in love you could be closing out cycles to do with your partner if you're married or in a committed partnership uh, or you could be closing out cycles in your business if you are self-employed taurus i want to thank you so much for stopping by we are now going to welcome gemini gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is gemini ascendant gemini moon or gemini sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so you've got the sun exalted in Aries in your 11th house through to the 13th of May. So that first half of the month, even from now, if you're watching this, you've got this winning energy on. Okay, so you can magnetize new opportunities, you can grow networks, you can land new clients, land new contracts, any of that. Now Mars approaches Rahu in your 10th house through to the 20th of May. Now as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter, and Jupiter is in Taurus and Jupiter is going to be joined by Taurus's Lord which is Venus from 19th May onwards what you're going to find is that last third of the month you have a brand new energy available to you so you might experience what have we got here yeah I do think so you might experience a renewed enthusiasm for your work and you can be seen and recognized for what you do you've definitely got that powerful mars in the 10th there so this is all very good for work or for what you do you know now we've got a new moon 8th may in your 11th house aries parani nakshatra so you can get ideas or insights on how to make more money 
or how to bring new opportunities into your life for creativity or for fun or for you know meeting new people right um, and on the 8th of May you could also plant seeds for new opportunities and then we've got a full moon on the 23rd of May in your sixth house that Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra so you could be letting go of any burdens around your work okay if you've been carrying burdens carrying other people's stuff you, know, you might recognize that and be able to let go you might even put some boundaries in that's a possibility you could be closing a cycle uh, or a court case or something to do with family finances something like that is possible as well so I'm wishing you well Gemini we are now going to welcome Cancer Cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Cancer Ascendant Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology just having a look the camera battery is flashing so it's going to cut out in a moment uh, we've got the sun exalted in Aries in your 10th house until the 13th of May. So the first half of the month really has you shining at work. You are being seen, you are being acknowledged. It could be a great time to present ideas or to launch something new. Now we've got Mars approaching Rahu in your 9th house through to the 20th of May. And because Pisces is lauded by Jupiter and Jupiter is now in Taurus and we're going to have Venus enter Taurus from 19th May onwards what you're going to find is that last third of the month you have got a brand new energy available to you so what area of work of life is this for you it, well it is work it can be work let's have a look here yeah I've got here it might help you take more responsibility at work and this also might help bring new opportunities your way now you've got a new moon on the 8th of May in your 10th house in Aries Barani Nakshatra. So look out for ideas and new inspiration regarding your career trajectory. Where is it that you want to go? Where do you see yourself in five years? All that kind of thing. But you could be getting ideas and inspiration now that's going to help you to get there. And there's a full moon on the 23rd of May in your 5th house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So you could be closing out a cycle regarding your children. Uh, you know, one of your children might graduate or something or, or finish something. Um, you could also be closing out a cycle regarding your team at work if you manage other people. Cancer, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got the sun exalted in Aries in your ninth house until the 13th of May. So what you say will have tremendous power and you will come across with a lot of authority. So you may use that as you wish. Leo, that's a really uh, exciting thing to have. Now Mars is going to approach Rahu in your eighth house through to the 20th of May. So because Pisces is lauded by Jupiter and now we have Jupiter in Taurus and we're going to have Venus entering Taurus from 19th May onwards for that last third of the month there's a brand new energy available to you so you might be motivated to sort out a lot of things you might be doing some clutter clearing you might organize your finances you might get on top of your admin could be quite a good time now we've got a new moon on the 8th of May in your ninth house in Aries Bharani Nakshatra so you might get ideas and insights on what you'd like to study next and from whom so that sounds pretty good to me you can also plant a seed to um, and Leo if you're going to design a course or teach something you can plant a seed that you create that thing that you're wanting to create whatever that is and there's a full moon on the 23rd of May in your fourth house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So cycles at home might close out. And this could also be in relation to your mother or how you nurture yourself. There could be some big significant cycles that close out. So bear that in mind. Leo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Virgo. 
Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now you've got the Sun exalted in Aries in your 8th house until the 13th of May. So you will be especially in, insightful at this time, either for your clients if you're a light worker, or you're going to be able to understand more about the hidden things in your own life. Now Mars approaches Rahu in your 7th house through to the 20th of May. And because Pisces is lauded by Jupiter, and now Jupiter is in Taurus, and Jupiter is going to be joined by Taurus's Lord Venus from 19th May onwards. I'm looking at that, you know, last third of the month, and we've all got a brand new energy available to us. So for you, this energy might help you grow relationships, either in your business or with your significant other. Or, you know, it might help you clear space for a significant other to come in. That's a possibility as well. You might want to do some clutter clearing too, Virgo. Now there's a new moon on the 8th of May in your 8th house in Aries Parani Nakshatra. So you might get ideas and insights on how to better organize your whole life. Yeah, I do think you could do with a bit of clutter clearing possibly. Now there's a full moon on the 23rd of May in your 3rd house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So any blocks you have regarding your confidence or courage could come to light and just by being aware of those blocks they could go forever it's that deep awareness that we want where you know the healing happens in at the consciousness plane so by you becoming deeply aware of something you might heal something forever and that's that full moon on the 23rd of may Virgo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got Sun exalted in Aries in your seventh house until the 13th of May. So you're going to find that you'll be quite empathetic towards others during this time. This is lovely. The, the Sun exalted here you know, uh, as it's setting, right? It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, I've got here, you'll have insights and knowledge about others that could really help them. Yeah, share what you know. If, if you feel compelled to share, then share. Now, Mars approaches Rahu in your sixth house through to the 20th of May. And because Pisces is lauded by Jupiter, and now Jupiter is in Taurus, and Jupiter will be joined by Venus from 19th May onwards. What we're going to find is that last third of the month, we've really got a new, a fresh new energy available to us. And for you, that energy might help you grow your client base. It might even help your finances at this time. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else might it do. It might also help improve your family relationships as well possibly or put a put a bit more focus on the family relationships too now there's a new moon 8th may in your seventh house in aries Bharani nakshatra so you might get ideas and insights about your significant other uh, or about your love life just in general and there's a full moon on the 23rd of may in your second house in scorpio anuradha nakshatra so you could be completing a cycle regarding your family of origin something might close out or it could even be in connection with uh, a childhood friend or something along those lines there could be a cycle close out there libra i want to thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome scorpio scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is scorpio ascendant scorpio moon or scorpio sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so you've got sun exalted in Aries in your sixth house until the 13th of May. This is winning energy. I love this. So you might be able to grow your client base. You might be able to compete more effectively. You might provide a heightened excellence in your service. You know, you can be seen and recognized. It's just really good energy. Physically, it could be good as well, actually. Uh, let's have a look at Mars. Yeah, it could be. Could be good energy physically too. 
Now Mars approaches Rahu in your fifth house through to the 20th of May. And as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter, and now Jupiter is in Taurus, and Jupiter is going to be joined by Venus from 19th May onwards, that last third of the month, we're going to have a brand new energy available. We're really going to feel it last third of the month. So this energy might help you grow your financial investments, might help you grow your business, might make you more creative as well. Yeah, definitely might make you more creative. Um, and it could even put the focus on your relationship with your children. Now there's a new moon on the 8th of May in your sixth house in Aries Barani Nakshatra. So you might get work-related insights at this time that will help you to improve your service or help you to compete better. It's also a time where you can plant seeds for your career uh, to be shown next steps or to have that accelerate a bit more. Now there's a full moon on the 23rd of May in your first house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So major cycles relating to your whole life could be completing at this time, Scorpio. This could be quite a profound time. And this is especially in relation to how you feel about yourself. Now after this full moon, you might feel ready. I've got here ready to commit to have a better relationship with yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that is a strong possibility. Scorpio, it's looking like a jam-packed month for you. I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. Now, we've got the sun exalted in Aries in your fifth house until the 13th of May. So this is beautiful energy to shine creatively. You can enjoy artistic pursuits, or time with your children. I've got here, get out and have fun. Now Mars approaches Rahu in your fourth house through to the 20th of May. Now as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter, and we've got Jupiter in Taurus, and then we're gonna have Venus join Jupiter from 19th May onwards. You know, the last third of the month, we've got a brand new energy available to all of us. So for you, this energy might get you to improve your home. It might be a time to do some good deep spring cleaning. Up here in the Northern Hemisphere, we've got spring going on. Don't worry, if you're down under, then um, you can do some spring cleaning too. <laughs> I have been known to do spring cleaning at the height of winter, how radical. All right, now there's a new moon happening on the 8th of May in your fifth house, and that's happening in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra. So there's a lot of artistic inspiration here in this new moon. And you can plant seeds on this new moon for creative ideas, for you know more inspiration, for a, for a stronger connection with your higher self. Um, also, uh, plant seeds for your children um, or to have children. If you, if you want to have kids, you can plant a seed at this time. Now, there's a full moon happening on the 23rd of May in your 12th house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So cycles relating to your spiritual side might close out at this time. There might be certain lessons that you're just done with. You know, you, you've, you've had them again and again, but it's like now it's, it's, it's ready to close out. So you might find certain things close out at this time, which would be good. I've got here, take note of your dream state around this time, around that 23rd of May, if you do the whole dream journaling thing and all that. Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now you've got Sun exalted in Aries in your fourth house until the 13th of May. So this is not the best month to move. If you do have to move, just be prepared that expenses could be a little bit higher uh, and that you know you might want to build in some buffer time and things like that. But if you're not moving, that's fine. Um, this energy could illuminate what needs fixing or improving in your home. It could also just bring the relationship with your mother more into focus. That's a possibility as well. Now we've got Mars approaching Rahu in your third house through to the 20th of May. And as we've got 
Pisces, you know, which is lauded by Jupiter and Jupiter is in Taurus and then Venus, Lord of Taurus, is going to enter Taurus from 19 May onwards. What we're going to find is that last third of the month is so there's some new energy, there's some shift, there's some different energy available. I've got here this energy might get you to improve your home. It might even be, yeah, it might be time for a good deep spring clean. I've said that for a couple of signs, haven't I? But yeah, this is, this is spring cleaning. You've, you've definitely got that lit up. So yeah, uh, good, good time to do some spring cleaning. I've got here this energy will definitely make you more confident, definitely more creative. And I've got here, this is think out of the box energy for you. So you might come up with new solutions that make your whole life more efficient. Could be time to sort of re-strategize how you do your day or there's something, some efficiency that you can gain here. Now I've got here, there's a new moon on the 8th of May in your fourth house in Bharani Nakshatra. So you might get new ideas or insights regarding the relationship with your mother or something to do with your home. Uh, and you might plant a seed for a new home or for improvements to where you live. And there's a full moon on the 23rd of May in your 11th house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So cycles relating to how you bring in new opportunities might close out. And you might be ready to graduate to bigger opportunities or, um, or improving the way that you bring in opportunities or something along those lines that's quite possible capricorn i'm wishing you well we are now going to welcome aquarius aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is aquarius ascendant aquarius moon or aquarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so now what do we have here we've got the sun exalted in aries in your third house until the 13th of may i love this this is just so good. So your confidence is at an all time high or it can be. OK, don't worry if, you know, uh, it's not at this time. I think, you know, I'm just remembering I, I spoke about we've got an Aquarius ascendant in the in the comments that I spoke about. And Louise Hay, her big affirmation, one of her big affirmations is I can do it. And I think she used to call her yearly event. I can do it or something like that. And I'll tell you what. I use that affirmation in my head a lot, like I need it <laughs> because I don't think I can do anything. But I, I have that affirmation and I just encourage myself, you know, we have to do that. And you, you, if you use that affirmation at this time, it'll be powerful. So I've got here, your confidence is at an all time high. I've got here, whatever it is, do it. Go for it. The time is now. Jump, say yes, make it happen. <laughs> I was writing out all these little bits of yay, kind of, you know, th th you've got that energy going on, Aquarius. See if you can feel it. And if you can't, use the affirmation, I can do it. And see if you can change your beliefs uh, at this time. You got the, ex that's exalted sun in the third house there. That's the mind, that's beliefs. You could do some real transformational work at this time. You could be your own best coach. Okay. Now Mars approaches Rahu in your second house through to the 20th of May. And as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter and now Jupiter is in Taurus and Jupiter is going to be joined by Venus, the Lord of Taurus from 19th May onwards. We're going to see that that last third of the month, we've got a fresh new energy available to all of us. And I've got here, this energy is actually great for being at home, for improving your home, for spring cleaning, for getting organized. Yeah, that message is quite a bit um, for a lot of signs this time. Now there's a new moon on the 8th of May in your third house. That's in Aries Bharani Nakshatra. So we've got insights or new ideas can occur to you regarding your creativity, regarding your art, regarding how you express yourself and how to get your stuff out there more. Okay. Uh, so that's the new moon on the 8th of May. And then we've got a full moon on the 23rd of May in your 10th house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. And what we've got here is that cycles relating to career and or work might close out for you. Uh, you might find that projects just naturally complete at this time. Aquarius, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Pisces. 
Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what have we got going on Pisces? We have got Sun exalted in Aries in your second house until the 13th of May. So this is quite interesting because sometimes and I have observed like because we've got second house and that can be eyes and that can be head and that can be headaches like sometimes when we've got you know sun sort of 12 1 and 2 that can be quite intense for the physical body so I've got here depending on how you handle the sun this position uh, and also you've got Rahu and Mars in the first house there yeah this so for some of you this might be invigorating for some of you this might be draining or tiring it could be either it, it depends um, I've also got here be careful of higher expenses at this time that's how this might manifest for you it's either going to be a little bit physically challenging or, and or it could be some higher expenses at this time now Mars approaches Rahu in your first house through to the 20th of May and as Pisces is lauded by Jupiter and now Jupiter is in Taurus and Jupiter is going to be joined by Venus from 19th May onwards basically that last third of the month we've all got this fresh new energy and for you this new energy could bring just a renewed enthusiasm for life um, especially in the simple things and I've got here that you know Saturn and Aquarius might be helping you be very disciplined about your sleep and you know when when we're talking about being grateful for the little things honestly I am just like so grateful for a good night of sleep I am grateful for like the simplest of things a good night of sleep I'm grateful for the sun on my face you imagine I'm in England so I don't get that very often um, what else am I grateful for yeah just a good home cooked meal you know basic things I kind of feel like you've got this is sort of homely type nice stuff here uh, when I'm looking at your first and your second and third and yeah I mean I, I think that is a way that this this fresh new energy can be can be enjoyed by you now we've got a new moon on the 8th of May in your second house uh, and that's happening Aries Bharani Nakshatra so you might get insights or new ideas on how to save more money or how to make more money or maybe you start up a savings account or maybe you shift a little bit of money into a savings account or something but this this could be um, and this this could just be insights and ideas this doesn't have to be you doing taking any action there's a new moon so you just you just might get some inspiration something around money and I've got here it's a new moon you can plant a seed for more money for more abundance to come into your life and we've got a full moon on the 23rd of May in your ninth house in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. So cycles relating to relationship with either your father or authority could close out at this time. And if you're quite consciously working with uh, all this information, you could you could on the 23rd of May Sort of consciously use that just to look at yourself look at your life look at well where am I responsible and and you know can I up my responsibility or authority over my own life can I take my power back from something can I um, you know what, what can I do kind of thing Pisces I think that's everything yeah that's that is everything uh, and any Pisces Moon people, I haven't, I, I had not talked, I've not talked about Sadi Sate for anyone, so either for Aquarius or Capricorn. But I'm just realizing that I was planning in my head to talk a little bit about Sadi Sate at the beginning because I didn't do any news matchup and I was going to talk about the chart of Jay Shetty, but I'll just talk about it here with you now because I've just remembered and I'll just switch this off. I've just remembered and yeah it's interesting I was watching um, someone called the true Geordie and you might some of you might be thinking how on earth are you part of the true Geordie audience I know it's pretty crazy I ended up finding out about him because I watch Alfie Days and Zoe Sugg and that's how I found out about true Geordie because true Geordie did an interview of Alfie and I watched that and it was very fascinating 
And so this True Geordie thing popped up and it was all about Jay Shetty. And I was like, oh, wow, who's that? And I had a look. I didn't know who Jay Shetty was, but I checked him out. I checked his chart out because, yeah, he's gone through tough stuff. And one of the things I discovered about Saadi Saathi, because they typically say that it's loss, you, you, especially that early part of Saadi Saathi, especially the first sort of two and a half, even five years, you know, you can experience some form of loss. And I was looking at the chart of Jay Shetty, and I think he's got an Aquarius moon, if I've got that right. And it was like, oh, wow. So he's experiencing loss of reputation. And a couple of golden rules I have for Sati Sati is just that you are self-honest and self-love. These are two things that Saturn loves. And if you've watched the whole video, I've got my Louise Hay book, You Can Heal Your Life. She talks all about self-love. And self-love is far bigger thing than, um, you know, just having a bubble bath on a Friday afternoon. You know, <laughs> that's not it. Like it's a lot more than that. It's actually hard to do. And if you try to love the self, the self with a capital S, the all is one. That's very hard to do. And yeah, Jay Shetty. So what's he got going on? He has got, he has not been honest with himself. Uh, or with his clients or anyone else, it seems. Um, and he's suffering a great loss of reputation. And so this is why I tend to think, you know, the people who come to this channel are, are really good people and you're honest and good people. And oh, it cut out. It cut out of me when I do these waffly things. Well, maybe I shouldn't do these waffly things. But anyway, it, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, the people that come to this channel and the people that, you know, I cross paths with and they're good, honest people. And, you know, Saturday Saturday ends up feeling a little just a bit more like Groundhog Day or just like you're limited, like you can't expand or grow on your terms, on your time kind of thing. You just, you just, there's, this, there's, a, there's a feeling of limitation. So, yeah, um, that... That is a really interesting thing. And another thing about Saudi Saudi, I'll tell you as well, is that when I check the charts of a couple of friends of mine, uh, two of them were in Saudi Saudi and they didn't know what it was. And I told them about it. And they said, oh, am I in a tough time? And they're like, oh, I, was, I didn't think it was a tough time. I've just been a bit, you know, haven't had much going on kind of thing. And yeah, that is when you're on the spiritual path and you know, you're just a good, honest, regular person. Saturn doesn't bother you too much, you know, but it, he will, Saturn can take down, you know, the Jay Shetty types who are like actively lying to a lot of people. And I've seen um, some interesting justice stories come from the Saudi Saudi. There was a famous city banker who ripped off millions of pounds from all kinds of people. And yeah, Saturn, boy, did Saturn take him to task across the entire Saudi Saudi. That, that is an extraordinary case study. So yeah, I tend to believe that, you know, people who come to this channel and anyone who, who's, who crosses paths here, like uh, no one's committing giant crime. I don't think anyone is, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe someone is, I don't know. But guys, I just, wanted to say thank you so much for watching i'm gonna to have to wrap this up because what time is it now oh my gosh it's seven i've got things to do um but thank you so much for watching i so appreciate you being here and let me know how you get on in the comments below and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.